sacrifice for the betterment not only of myself, not only of my family, not only of my close community, but of the entire community of which I am part, of the entire society of which I am part. I have to raise my voice and speak for what is true and speak for what is just. I have to raise my voice and speak for the weak who cannot speak for themselves. I have to raise my voice and speak for those that are in need. And I have to do more than just voice. I have to follow the voice with action. I have to find in my own self what it is that I can contribute that is of good, that is a positive contribution, that will leave a positive mark, that will leave a good legacy in this place where I live, in this time where I am tested. This is our ethic. This is what we are about as a community. This was the story of Ibrahim when he left his family behind to establish a new community. This was the story of Ibrahim when he left his family behind in the care of no one but God. This was the story of the family of Ibrahim when they accepted that their role was to depend on God and to connect with people and to build a new community with a good foundation, with a pure foundation, with a spiritual and a moral foundation. When these verses are over, God says, All of that is one side, is one thing. But remember, whoever glorifies, whoever sanctifies the things that God has made sacred, this is better for him and his Lord. You can pray all you want. You can say the words all you want. You can fast, you can sacrifice, you can give charity, you can go on the pilgrimage, you can do all of this. But at the end of the day, what is best is that we hold sacred what God has held sacred. And God has held this brotherhood of humanity sacred. And God has held the human self to be dignified. God says, We have dignified and ennobled the children of Adam. He does not distinguish on race. He does not distinguish on wealth. He does not distinguish on social status. And on this occasion, when he is talking about the dignity of the human being, he does not distinguish on faith. He makes no distinction between any of the children of Adam. They all have the dignity of being God's creation. And that is sacred to God. And it should be sacred to us on this day and on every day. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. This is the way that we celebrate, is we come together. We've talked about what we celebrate. We've talked about the lessons. We've talked about the contribution that we need to make. The way we do it is by coming together. You and I individually, there is only so much we can do. But you and I together, and together with our brothers and sisters, our friends and our neighbors, our colleagues, the people we work with, the people we live next to, together we can do much. Together we can set this country, we can continue to keep this country on our right course. We can keep this country as a, as a country that makes a positive contribution not only within to the people that are in need, but outside and beyond our borders in a way that is ethical, in a way that is moral, in a way that avoids oppression and tyranny and injustice. We need to be the voice, we need to be the hand that will support goodness, that will support brotherhood, that will support peace, that will sanctify the dignity of the human being. And we can only do it together. We can only do it if we are present. We can only do it if we are away. When there are forums for us as Muslims, for us as Canadians, to talk about our priorities, to identify our priorities, to engage in dialogue, we have to be present in those forums. We cannot afford to be insulated and isolated and closed in on ourselves as individuals or as families or as a community. We have to get out there, we have to participate, we have to be engaged. That was the example of our Prophet, peace be upon him. Our Prophet was not 
someone who stayed, who went out in the desert and dedicated himself to a ritual form of worship. Our prophet was someone who lived amongst his community and built his community and was a practical, living example to live the book, to live the word. We were not just given a Quran as, as words on paper. We were given the Quran and we were given with it the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with his kindness, with his passion for the weak, with his passion for justice, with his passion for truth, and with his example of sacrifice. And that's how we should understand it, and that's how we should follow it. Ibadullah, inna Allah amarakum bi amri bada fihi bi nafsih, wa thanna fihi bi malaikati qudsih, wa thanna thabikum ayuha al-mu'minun. Faqala azza bin qa'il, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم انصر الجهاد الحق في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم ارفع الظلم عن المظلومين ورد القهر عن المقهورين يا اسقط الله تجيب اسباب في الفرقات مش يسقطس to teach us that which is a benefit to us, to increase us in knowledge. We ask God for sincerity in all our words and deeds. We ask Him to show us the way of truth and of justice. We ask Him to allow us to follow the way of truth and of justice. We ask Him to allow us to leave a positive mark in the communities in which we live. Congratulations, Eid Mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Sayyid for you and your families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the joy and the pleasure of this Sayyid for you and your families. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.